everybody. Um, in case you don't know me, I'm Brian. Um, uh, I run a venue called The Chocolate Factory, and I work very closely as an artist with a, um, a lot of people, but Madeline Bess is in the crowd, and I want to point her out to you, because um, she contributes a lot to, to the work that we make. Uh, we mainly make performances um, that are primarily about video, but for a variety of reasons, we um, decided to make a film. So last year, about this time last year, we shot a feature film um, upstate at Dan Hurley's house, if you know who Dan Hurley is. Um, and it's nearly finished, but I'm just gonna show, we're just gonna show the very first 20 minutes of a feature length film. Um, and you are all the first people to actually see any of this that didn't, that didn't work on it. So um, that'll be interesting for me. Um, but this is sort of one part of a two-part project that will premiere at PS122 uh, next year. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, it's, it's 20 minutes long. I'm just going to start. So if we can kill the lights whenever. Jim. 
Take a look at this. Well, that's perfect. Let's have a glass of wine. <coughs> to us. To us. from the road. I'm fine. You're wonderful. I know. <laughs>
it's not too late. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. What about your friend? She'll wait here. Can I take your coat? That won't be necessary. <laughs> this is Janine, my wife. So I gather. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, and don't you look lovely tonight. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to freshen up. Jim, you've outdone yourself with this one. Thank you. I try. Join us? I will. Warms the heart. How was your drive? Fine. The roads are very smooth. Yes, we take great pride in the quality of our roads. Jim really knows how to handle himself behind the wheel. I'm sure he's useful in many situations. And how's the house so far? It's gorgeous. A little drafty, no? Not at all. It's perfect. Give yourselves some time to settle in. You'll see what I mean. See? I told you. I'm sorry to intrude, but I couldn't wait to meet the new arrivals. You knew we were coming? Of course. News travels fast. It's a small town. There's little to see and even less to do. All we have here are the people. And the roads. Yes, <laughs> our very fine roads. Well, we look forward to meeting everyone. The feeling is mutual, I'm sure. I'll drink to that. Yes. Let's. I'll be right back. Another? Thank you. No. I really must be going. Uh, I'll see you out. I know the way. Thanks for the wine.
We'll see. Something tells me you'll want to bother with them. Does this sleep like a ghost tonight? Certainly hope so. Good morning, ma'am.
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very different version. Okay, so thank you everybody for coming to Prelude 2016. I'm Nina Siegel, I'm one of the producers. Um, and we have Brian Rogers, whose uh, section of Screamers you just saw. And we have Madeline, who works with Brian very closely, and Tina Sada, uh, who, if you were here before, we had an installation screening of Cadences. Um, so I think we've got about 10 minutes, so we'll just talk briefly, and then if anyone has any questions, Please go ahead. Um, maybe we want to start by just talking a little bit about how the projects came to be and how you think they fit into your wider practice of live work. Um, the piece that I screened was called Theatre Company Colon Cadences, and it was um, edited. It was a vid two videos in this case, um, one that screened there and one on the smaller screen down here, that were edited together. Um, clips from video pieces that as half straddle we've shot over the years that are just like uh, like a web series we made our started to make ourselves like five years ago something I shot of Jess Barbagallo when I first met him in grad school um, then there's some records from rehearsals of various projects and it it's just this footage I've had now for like eight or nine years um, accumulating and I've, it's just, it's kind of an amazing archival thing for us, pers for me personally, for the company, but I also s think there's there's just like interesting, it, when I could step back from it, seeing a group of performers next to each other, working together, saying things, and also framed within these um, unexpected weird contexts, because that's not the work of our shows usually. So anyways, I just um, decided, to, this was an experiment of it, um, when I was asked to do something for Prelude, to like really push it and edit it together, and have the two videos work together, and then put them in an installation setting that drew from some of the costumes and props and aesthetics of the images in the video pieces. Um, and I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't want to take up too much time, more time about it, but where it, I have lots of developing thoughts and where it fits into my practice, because to like be looking at these people that I've looked at a million times and then look at them on video and be able to edit and repeat their gestures. I mean, it was edited in iMovie in pretty dumb ways, which was so fun, but like repeat their gestures, slow down when they look at each other. It felt weirdly similar to being in the rehearsal room with my interests that are like framing moments and these people seeing each other and seeing who's out there. So I was interested in clips where they look out. So it felt, com it felt surprisingly within my theatrical interest, I felt like I was directing this thing, which I don't think is surprising to have happen. But. Is it something that you imagine will be ongoing to keep adding to this piece? Yeah, this was so, yes, I love doing it. And we have this footage, and to me it's just these incredible performers, some of who are here, and like these, I just like the aesthetics of it. I like some of the lo-fi video in there, and I don't even know if this is on or, or I'm just loud, but um, <laughs> I am loud. Um, but yes, I want to figure out more, because I don't know other artists, I've been talking to a lot, of, several other artists lately about this. We have all this stuff that exists, and what do you do with it, and how do you create new meaning for it if you want to, or, and I've been really, really interested in that question at this recent time in my career, where I've busted a lot of stuff out, and I'm like, what, and what does all this behind me mean? And, and I, this way of playing around with the video has been really interesting, so I want to, but I want to, I want to be, it, this felt like a first step, and I think there's a lot more for me to figure out about how to best contextualize and show it. Um, uh, well, we've been making, um, for the last several years, we've, we've been making, um, we've made a few big performances that were um, really entirely about video, and we're referencing um, other movies, specific sort of um, cinematic vocabularies of, of um, of di different movies, and um, um, at a certain point, a couple of years ago, I think we just had this idea that I should that we should make an actual movie of our own, um, just to see, it, just to say that we had tried to do it. Um, and I didn't really have any specific idea of what of what we would do. I didn't think we would make something sort of as large in scale as we wound up doing. But it just sort of happened in this in this weird sort of way through Karen Sherman, who. Are you in, are you here, Karen Sherman? Through, through Karen Sherman, 
she proposed this idea two years, two plus years ago, um, that we take, uh, we have this friend, Dan Herlin, who's a, a really amazing artist and, and person who has this church upstate. In, um, it was Karen's idea that we, um, he was gonna go live in Italy for a year and she proposed that we take it and use it for, um, for a year. And so we, we wound up spending, in different, I spent a lot of time up there by myself in this church, this, um, and kind of just wound up writing this the, a screenplay really quickly, like in two or three days, and then rewrote it many, many times, and then um, many, many times with Madeline's help, and then I just asked Dan if he would if we could shoot it, um, and he said yes, and we wound up shooting this um, movie. We had eleven yeah eleven shooting days. It was crazy, and we, and we just with all of. And just with all of our friends, um, a lot of people that you know are, are in this movie. They haven't appeared. They they appear later. Um, and so we just said, yeah, I just wanted to make a movie, um, and not to make um, because I feel like the the pieces that I that we've been making are kind of have these kind of really high concept um, abstract references to films. I wanted to make a. I didn't want to sort of for me the way to not cheat was to make was to try to make a film. Um, that kind of adheres to certain film conventions, like quote unquote Hollywood film conventions, my, my version of them. So that's what this is trying to do. It was and also, we really took our, our working practice and our people who we work with in a performance theater setting and we're like, we're just gonna m make a movie. So there was a lot of learning about what that process would be, but also taking our sort of working working relationships that we already had and into this other medium, which I think is a way that they connected. This really felt like an extension of our theatrical practice, even though it's such a different um, outcome. Yeah. And do you have a plan for the, like the full premiere of it? Do you know when that will happen? Um, well, so, um, I think of this film as um, sort of half of a larger project, and so there's, a, there's a performance that we're going to make that's meant to be that's meant to sit alongside this film that will happen at PS122 um, next summer, I think. Um, and um, that performance is it's a performance about video. There are um, that's whose subject really is the space that it happens in. It's sort of a horror. I think of it as like a horror, a live horror film about about a theater. Um, and then this will screen alongside it. And <clears throat> but then I also, I do hope that, that I'll find some way to screen this film um, as its own object somewhere, but I don't, um, I haven't really figured out what the right, um, the right avenue to take that is. Great. Um, so the theme of this year's prelude is welcome failure. Uh, so although not everything is created in response to that, it feels worth mentioning. Um, do you find that you have a different relationship to failure when you're working in this medium? You mentioned editing and being able to kind of go back over things and look at things in a different way. And also with this work, it's, it's very pristine and it's, you really are working towards a, a final cut that will be set at some point. Do you think, it, do you have a different relationship to experimentation and failure when you're working with editing and with film? Well, yes, I, like a couple weeks ago, I taught myself iMovie to edit this, so it was like extremely freeing, like with the book next to me. I had done it a couple years ago and hadn't done it, and so it was all about like failure and weird mistakes, and oh, that got dropped next to that clip, so now it's doing this amazing weird wiggle there. I'm totally keeping that, and now how to repeat it. So it's literally an exercise in overcoming failure inherent to my ignorance every second of it, and then, being very um, precious, like kind of, it was like, oh, it's just a weird video I'm editing, and I just taught myself, I'm like, but I mean, of course I knew it was gonna screen somewhere that feels really, you know, I it's gonna be seen, and it's like I, very nice to be in Prelude, and I want people to come in and be intrigued and interested in it. So I wasn't just like, whatever, but so that, there was a stake of failure to it there, and then the, in the meta aspect, these were all sort of, in most aspects, projects, not that they never failed, but they had never gone out into the world. So they sort of were like experiments that, you know, for whatever reason, hadn't ever 
spin out. So they, they were inherently not failures, like maybe some of them had been, but they were renewed. So. Um, for us, was, you know, when we were, when we, the performances that we've made, um, um, we've, we've, we've tended to work in this really slow and kind of noodling and um, the processes are really long and we, we sort of afford ourselves endless opportunities to rethink and um, like overthink. overthink everything. And so the thing that was really um, fascinating and really fun about this is that because for a variety of reasons, like the schedule of when we could have Dan's house and the budget that we had to work inside of and all the people that we had to bring together, we had to make, we had to shoot this thing so quickly. Um, it was literally, we, you know, we were there for, for two weeks. We had 11 shooting days. Some of those days were like 20 hours long. And it was, there was just no opportunity to really, to think, overthink anything. We were, you know, we, at, the, at best, we were able to get two decent takes of, if we were, if we, if we got two decent takes of any one particular shot, we felt lucky. And so we had to just make really ch choices really fast and just commit to them and not, and we just, there wasn't time to, to worry about whether they were good choices. They were just, we just made a lot, I made so many arbitrary choices about this. And it was so fun to do that. Um, but then in the editing, I've now, ha I've now had this footage for a year and we've been sitting, I've been sitting in my apartment editing this. This is the third or fourth sort of pass through of this edit that we've done. Um, and that's to me really, um, there is a lot of opportunity there to rethink and remake things, but what's really exciting, to, what's fun for me about it is that I'm not having to um, negotiate with anyone else's ideas or personalities around it so much. It's just the material. The material is what it is. I, I, I can't change the material. It's all, so it's all, it's, it's kind of really fun to be able to, there's, there's a lot of freedom in, inside the idea of being able to just remake all of this stuff without having to, there's no more generation that can happen for this. So. It's also interesting Great. Do we have any questions from the room? Anybody want to ask anything? Okay. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Um, and we will be starting in a couple of minutes with uh, our next set, which is going to be four readings. So do stick around. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>